So I mentioned at the end of one of my other buffer videos that buffers are really good for saving and loading data really quickly. And I actually kind of feel a little bit bad that I buried that piece of information at the end of a 20 minute video. So uh, I'll, I'll give it its own. I'll talk about it a little bit more in, in this video. Hopefully more people will be able to see it and make use of it this way. So uh, let's say that you want to, uh, let's say you want to write a lot of data to a file. Um, we, can, uh, we can make that a binary file, we can make that a text file. I don't really care what kind of file it is. Uh, I'll go with a binary file because I just want to write a bunch of zeros or something. So file bin open, I'm going to call it a, a, what did I call it in the, in the other video? Data.bin. Again, it doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't even matter what file extension you give it. And I believe one is the uh, is write mode. And we'll close that when we're done with it so that we don't leak any information. And then I'm just going to, I'm just going to write a lot of data to it. I don't really care what that data is if you were using this to create a save game of some sort. Um, this would instead be your save game data. And let's uh, let's populate the file with about 100 kilobytes of, say, the number... Oh god, what's a good number? Let's go with 100. File, bin, write, byte. Uh, file, and the value of 100. And then we can close the file, as I said. And if you want to see how long it takes to, uh, to write this out, once again, there's the get timer trick. Or you could use the debugger, but... Since when would I use the uh, the proper tool for the job? And then when that's done, we'll uh, we'll show the elapsed time. And I'll actually uh, this time convert it into milliseconds instead of a uh, microseconds, like I did the last time. So let's run this. And I'm going to hit the space bar, and it's going to take 187 milliseconds to do that. Okay, that's not bad. It's not negligible either. I want to go in here. And if I were to open this up in the hex editor, you can indeed see that it's uh, full, of, um, full of the value 100. That's 100 in hexadecimal. D is the, the ASCII value, the corresponding character. And there's 100,000 of them. Cool. That did exactly what we thought it would. So, uh, 187 milliseconds or whatever it was, I think it was about 180-ish and change. That's not bad, but you can speed that up if you, uh, if you felt so inclined. So instead of using a file, I will say var file buffer equals buffer create. And the size is going to be 100,000. Uh, the type is going to be fixed. And the alignment is going to be 1. This could be whatever type of buffer of whatever size, of whatever type, of whatever alignment you want, depending on your needs. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to remember to delete the buffer this time when I'm done, because uh, I actually forgot to mention that in the initial buffer video, and I can't believe I forgot to mention that because if you if you forget to do that, that is a memory leak, and that would be bad. You could use a repeat loop to fill the buffer. Um, Repeat 100,000 or whatever it was, uh, which is what I did at the uh, in the other video where I mentioned this. You could also use buffer fill, which is basically the buffer clear function that I was asking about and um and and didn't look up properly until I was done with the recording. The offset's going to be zero. The type is going to be uh, buffer u8. The value is going to be 100, and the size is going to be uh, the capacity of the buffer. You could get buffer get size. Or you could just hard code it because it's just this one instance and we were allowed to do that. And then you actually save it. Buffer save, file, buffer. Um, the file name can be data, buffer, dot bin. Oops. Again, the file extension is largely irrelevant. And uh, it's just kind of traditional to use dot bin to represent binary files, which is a fact that I find kind of interesting. Hey. But nevertheless, we can run this. And if I hit the space bar, that took 3.99 milliseconds. You could do that in every frame of the game and still maintain 60 frames per second. Not that you would, because there's no real point in saving the game every single frame 60 times a second. But if you wanted to, 
Well, you could you could do it, and you could still have the game run at 60 frames per second. It's worth noting, the buffer save itself, oops, actually takes even less time than that. Because uh, this, this is the only function that we're testing the speed of. Writing stuff to the hard drive involves communicating with different parts of the computer hardware that are not right next to each other, so it does take longer than simple things like addition and subtraction. And also, if you have an old spinning hard drive like I do, it's the only mechanical piece of equipment in, in the computer and you have to wait for it to physically move as well. If you have a solid state hard drive, it'll be faster all around. Um, out of curiosity... Okay, so the buffer save function itself takes less than, uh, less than one millisecond. In this case, with this amount of data. Hey! Which is pretty fast, all things considered. This isn't exactly a fair comparison because in the beginning when I was using the binary file to write the data, I had to actually put the loop to write the data inside the, uh, inside the get timer itself. And realistically when you're saving a game, a part of the amount of time it takes to do that, unless you're writing threaded code, which GameMaker will not do, um, part of the time it takes to save the data is, is also just uh, compiling the save file. Unless you're just doing a RAM dump or something, which comes with its own problems. Okay, I am genuinely curious. If I were to disable the file system sandbox, because that is a thing that you are allowed to do in recent versions of GameMaker Studio 2, and if I were to write this to my F drive, all right, backslash, backslash, because we'll do things correctly, because my F drive is a solid state hard drive, uh, how long will that take? Okay, that actually took more time. I don't know why that would be, unless uh, unless avoiding the file system sandbox also takes time in Game Maker. Interesting. You'd think it would be the other way around. Okay, if anyone knows the answer to that, I will be very interested in hearing it. Uh, once again, though, these two files are identical. They, they contain the same data. Um, this is this is a file full of 100 kilobytes of Ds. Don't take that out of context. And it worked in only a fraction of the amount of time that uh, that the other file functions did. You can even use this as a replacement for file text write string or whatever, if you, uh, if you just stuff a bunch of strings into the buffer. And again, you can do a lot of other fun things with buffers that you can't really do with file bin write bytes, such as floating point. Because if you are one who tries to write floating point to the file byte by byte, I'm sorry. I find this real useful, and I hope that other people find it useful as well. Anyway, this is this is really only a couple lines of code. I'm not going to make this available for download in the description of the video because there's just so little of it. But regardless, my name is Dragonite. This has been a little piece of helpful advice when it comes to making games in Game Maker. I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.